Equity demands a reasonable allocation of resources among all people and all life. Societies throughout history have had some level of inequity and different responses in addressing it. We inevitably experience problems when peoples can't provide for themselves, whether crime, illness, or other. Economic inequality is real, it's personal, it's expensive, and it was created. This isn't sustainable. We can't have a prosperous economy without a large middle class. Systems that ensure that the well-resourced continue to receive increasing flows of resources are problematic because we live in finite economies and regions on a finite planet. In exacerbating inequity, the wealthy actually threaten their own livelihoods and community stability. In a study of 70 countries, the National Bureau of Economic Research found that investment decreases when inequality increases, and that inequality fuels instability through discontent. The International Monetary Fund recently came to the same conclusion. It is in the interest of those who have secured a healthy quality of life to give money away and help ensure others are stable. Barriers 1 through 5, with respect to the system decision makers that we looked at earlier, represent the inertia within decision makers, blocked feedback, and blocked information flow. Wealth concentration, barrier 6, is a structural barrier that enriches some at the expense of others. Optimizing the global system also means looking at the role of diversity. Diversity creates better groups, firms, schools, and societies. Diversity comes in many flavors. There is the geographic, ethnic, gender, cultural, and skill set diversity of decision makers. There is a diversity of information generated by these different perspectives. There is the surrounding biodiversity of the planet's living systems. And there is the diversity of resources to draw on to generate energy, build homes, make clothing, make medicine, and more. Although we can apply diversity to many different places, the one common thread we can point to is this. Diversity matters. System science tells us that more diverse systems tend to be healthier, whether ecosystems, food systems, or other social systems. But don't take it from me. Take it from Tom Peters. If you sit down with a group to work on something and it is not a diverse group, you are really screwing it up. Big time. We see the power of diversity in business where an effective business needs a range of marketing, accounting, project execution, and leadership skills. We see the power of diversity in ecosystems when a disease affects a few species and the remaining unaffected species thrive as food web niches open. And in farming, planting multiple types of crops with different tolerances to blights and weather changes helps ensure some crops succeed where others fail. Diversity is a direct contributor to the healthy ecosystems required in the third natural step condition. It is also deeply entwined with the equity of the fourth condition. However, lack of diversity is less of a structural barrier, like wealth concentration in the system decision makers, and more of a quality of the system itself. Diversity inherently helps us get the good results we seek. A diverse array of life is required for optimum health of the living planet. In human societies, until we get to a point where we embrace diversity for its richness, accepting any perceived or real distaste around change, we will continue to disenfranchise some over others and exacerbate inequity.